Hi everyone, so I have a testimony that I've been wanting to share for a while now. Um, the last few weeks have been crazy. I've been transitioning from Michigan back to Colorado, trying to get a job. All the things have been going on, but everything is good, everything is settled, and I can't wait to share this testimony um, that I've been sitting on for about a month now. So um, in June, from June 10th to 12th, I was on a fast. Um, and usually during my fast, God either deals with me about something or um, talks to me about something that I've already prayed. So in this case, he was dealing with me about something. So he was dealing with me about um, surrendering to him fully. So I go to church, um, serve on ministries, fast, pray, read, all of that, but I wasn't fully surrendered to God. So I was still struggling with pornography, uh, masturbation, homosexual thoughts, um, gossip, lying, just a lot of stuff was going on. Some stuff I was actively working on and other stuff that was just something I was holding on to so that if I felt like God wasn't doing what I needed him to do or he wasn't responding how I thought he should, I could go back to that stuff over there and I could find comfort in that. So um, God was de dealing with me on surrender, like, are you ready to surrender to me yet? So on June 9th, which was the night before my fast, actually June 9th through the 10th, I think, yeah, I was going to a youth conference um, that was near my house uh, through my church, the Church of God in Christ. Um, and the um, youth chair lady, Courtney Shelby, she was teaching um, about pressure. And then right at the end, we had a Q&A and somebody had asked, how, are you, how do you live holy if you're horny? Um, and that immediately caught my attention because that was my specific issue. Like, okay, I need help with this. And Holy Spirit, I hear you. I see what you're saying. So she gave this awesome testimony about um, just learning to value herself more and see herself the way God sees her. Um, just getting busy in the things of God. And it was really just like this jumping uh, point for me of like, okay, this is where I can start to let go of these things and be free of this completely so that I can do what God is asking me to do and I'm not half stepping. Um, so that was Thursday night, the 9th. And then the 10th comes and it's the second night of the uh, convention. And um, the lady who was supposed to preach she didn't even preach. She just got up and is just moving in the Holy Ghost, laying hands on people, giving people um, words. She's getting words of knowledge. Uh, people are rededicating their lives to Christ. It's like a whole worship praise fest. We're all going in. And it was amazing. Um, but the, again, I left that night and God was just asking me, like, are you ready to surrender to me yet? Um, and I, it was like, a, not really, God, I'm not really ready to let go of these things. I hear what you're asking me but I don't know how to let them go. Like, you're gonna have to help me through this because I I really would like to hold on to them if that's okay with you, even though clearly that's not that's not what the plan was. So um, I come back, that was Friday night. Yes, Friday night, or there's a, um, a time after that. So there's one more service after that. That next service, again, this time the preacher who's supposed to preach, he actually gets up, preaches, it was really good. Um, and again, he's just talking about like, are you ready to do everything you need to do for the call? Like, are you ready for him to cleanse you? Are you ready to go all the way in again? That, are you ready to surrender to me? Um, and as soon as he's done preaching again, Holy Ghost chaos, revival, mayhem, people are getting words of knowledge, prayer, um, again, rededicating their lives to God. It's a praise fest all over again. And I just remember um, leaving that night and I listened to the song, Yes, by Shekinah Glory. Will your heart and soul say yes? I have more that I require of thee. Will your heart and soul say yes? Um, and it was just that ringing over and over in my mind. The next day, we had uh, the Don't Spill the Tea event um, through, again, the Church of God in Christ. And uh, that whole thing was amazing. Young Women of Excellence is amazing. If you're not a part of it, you need to get plugged in because it's amazing. Changed my life. So the whole thing was great, um, but the two or the one that really got me was um, identity. So Amber was teaching on identity, having your purpose in Christ, knowing who you are in Christ, and understanding that your uniqueness, your difference is where your favor is at. But what she started with was, um, what did she start with? Oh, she had us all say, I have a purpose. Um, and when she had us say, I have a purpose, like I just, it was just like, God was bringing all this stuff back to my remembrance. Like church is not just for you to go to, to be around people that you love, to serve, like all of that is great. I'm glad that you love your church home, that's wonderful, but there's more for you to do. Like I have so much more that I wanna do with, for, and through you, but like 
are you ready to say yes to me yet? Like it was again that reminder of like, I love you so much and I want what's best for you, but we gotta, we gotta clean this thing up. Not because I'm mad at you or frustrated with you or I wanna beat you up and make you feel bad, but I know who you are and I know who I created you to be and I know what I created you to do. And this, all this extra stuff that you're holding on to is like getting in the way of that. So are you ready to surrender, surrender to me yet? So that later that day I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw um, Daniel Adams was in town. Um, I thought I had missed him because, you know, when you scroll through Facebook reels, those could be months old. I looked at the date and it said June 10th, and that was the day before. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder if he's still here. So I check his website out. He's still there. Um, he's having a service in Detroit, and I lived about 40 minutes from Detroit. So I got on my car. I had literally just gotten out of the shower, got in my car, went and um, went down to the service. So we go to the service. Uh, and we start worshiping. We had praise and worship. It was really good the whole time. And then um, we are on the floor. He tells us, like, come get to the altar uh, as close as you can. So I try to get as close as I can. And uh, he just tells us, like, I'm not going to touch you because Jesus can touch you from anywhere. So everybody just stand still. Don't do anything. Like, just be still. Focus on God. So we're all, like, standing still, focused on God. I know I'm in my mind thinking, like, what's going to happen? When's, what's it, when's it going to happen? Like, when's something going to happen? Because we stood there for, it probably wasn't that long, but it felt long because there was like, he was like, no movement, no sound, just focus on God. Um, and then he started to call things out. And he was like, if you're, he said something along the lines of, like, if you're struggling with pornography, like, don't fake the front. Don't worry about what people think. Like, you need to come up to the front. And repent. So I came up even closer. I was already close, but I got onto the um, stairs at the front of the church, um, and I repented, like, Lord, please forgive me of um, indulging in pornography. And then he goes on and he says something else, and I don't remember what he says, but I just feel like this urgency all of a sudden of like, I need to get out of here. And the crazy thing was, right before we got up, he was like, he said a prayer over the doors, like nothing would be able to get out, nothing would be able to escape. So. Um, I wasn't, I didn't realize it at first, but I was manifesting a demon and the demon in me was like, we, I have to get out of here now. Like I was, I was on the floor crawling backwards, trying to get out of there. Thank God there were a lot of people behind me or I surely would have made it out of those doors. Um, so they, he tells, he tells them to bring me up front, like bring it, bring the demon here. So I walk up the stairs, he prays for me. Um, and then the, there's like lots of screaming and stuff. Um, and he's trying to get the demon to talk. Um, and eventually he casts it out of me. Um, and I'll put some clips in later on. And uh, so I'm laying there. He casts the demon out of me. Uh, I come back. So I come back, get up, go sit down. Um, and it's the, the service is continuing to go on. He's praying for other people. And he has a whole bunch of people who are helping him that they call forerunners. So it, there's like tons of people that are out there available, ready to pray, pray for you. It's not just him alone. So I go off to the side and I just feel weird. Like it just, I just, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Like my stomach feels strange. But again, at this point I had been fasting for two days. So it's not cause I ate something. I'm not feeling sick cause of something I, I took in. Like it just, I just don't feel good. Um, we're clapping for people cause they're getting their deliverance. I feel like I can't clap. I, I feel like I just have this bad attitude. It just was like bad. Um, and then I forget, I think the worship either started happening again. Something started happening, prayer or something, and I start manifesting again. So I'm, like, rolling on the floor, not feeling good. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, stuff is still crying out of me. I get up, I sit down, and someone asks me, like, do you need help? And I was like, yeah, I don't feel good. Like, my stomach hurts really, really bad. She said, okay, let me get someone else who could pray for you. So this lady comes over, and she um, was like, she said, you're not feeling good. Like, do you need prayer? And I was like, yes. And she starts telling me to like renounce all this stuff. Um, and I can't remember all the things that I renounced, but um, one of the things was rejection. And as soon as I said that, like it again, demons manifesting, trying to intimidate them, screaming out of me. Um, and then at this point, uh, it's her and like two other ladies and they're praying for me and praying for me. And all this stuff is coming out, stuff that I had no idea was there, rage, uh, murder, witchcraft, um, molestation, rape, stuff that I've never been through. I've, I've never been through most of that. So it just kind of was like this mind boggling thing that I had, I had thought like the little leaf was my problem, but there was a whole root, a whole tree 
that I had that I was just carrying around, but thinking, oh, it's not that big of a deal because it's just a little this, it's just a little that. Like sin is a really serious thing. You don't get to decide what spirits enter you when you partake in sin. Like it's not like a, oh, I'll choose depression, but not suicide, or I'll choose anxiety, but not murder, or I'll choose this and not that. And then even further, um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, after this experience talking to family members, oh yeah, you know so-and-so and committed murder. Oh yeah, you know so-and-so and used to do witchcraft. So people who are generations behind me, I'm still dealing with that stuff today because of ignorance and people, us just not knowing like that stuff is there and that God wants to remove those things and then indulging in things that are probably not helping the stuff that's already there. So um, that goes on for four hours. They prayed for me for four hours that night. And the only reason I didn't, I ended up not getting my deliverance that night, but it was only because I wasn't willing to let go of unforgiveness. So what would happen is they would pray for me, the demons would manifest and scream and whatever, and they would call fire and all of that, but they wouldn't leave because I wasn't willing to let go of that stronghold, the main thing that was keeping them there, their legal right. So um, I went home and I prayed and I was like, okay, God. I'm ready to surrender now because once I actually saw the manifestation of all this stuff and what it looked like, it wasn't worth holding on to anymore, like screaming and rolling around and hitting things. And it, it wasn't worth it. And all the the um, tasks that the, those leaders had to go through just to get me free, it wasn't worth it. It all put it in per, into perspective like, yeah, I'm ready to surrender. You can have this. This is for the birds. So um, I went home that night, was like, uh, repenting of unforgiveness and asking God to just help me to let any, let go of anything else that I don't know is there. Next day, I go to the next service, um, and the <laughs> the next service didn't start till 11 a.m., but I got there at like 7 o'clock in the morning because I was ready to be free. I was done with it. Yep, take, a, take it all. Clean me up. Do what you got to do. Um, so the service starts, same deal. We worship first. Um, he tells us to come to the altar. Whoever wants to come can come. Again, I try to get as close as I can because I'm trying to get this done. I want to be done with this. Um, and he prays for us, and I start manifesting again. Um, and they, again, take me to the side and pray for me some more, some more stuff that I've just never heard of. Jezebel, Poindexter, um, just all types of demons that I just I'm like, oh, my gosh. All right, Lord. We're going to do this thing for real because I never want to have to do this, this type of situation ever again. Um, and again, that unforgiveness thing comes back and I'm like, dang, I really thought I let this go. And then Jesus starts bringing to my remembrance all these little things that I hadn't let go of. I dealt with being easily offended. So it didn't, it was like the littlest thing I would hold on to people for and hold grudges for. So I had to let all of that go. And it was a process, a whole process. So after um, probably like an hour or two, just sitting by myself and for real, letting everything go, they came back, they prayed for me some more. And I finally, they started like getting stuff out of me, like I was coughing up stuff. And um, it was probably another two or three hours after that, that um, I was laying on the floor. This lady is like calling all this stuff at me, <laughs> calling, 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 calling. And um, I, I was free, like I just came up and I was free. Everything was gone, everything was done. Oh, also in the middle of that, Daniel also prayed for my back. Um, uh, several years ago, I'll have to make another testimony video about it, but I, I was diagnosed with scoliosis um, and so my spine was uh, in the shape of an S and like severely inwardly rotated, caused me a lot of pain. Had to have a major back surgery. I had 22 uh, screws and two rods placed in my spine um, just to help straighten me out. Um, and uh, I've had prayer for it before and it really helped me a lot, but I had been experiencing pain since then. Um, and from then on, like I've had, I, I, I don't have as much flexibility as I would like, but it's coming, but I haven't had as much back pain. I've been able to um, stand for longer periods of time, just do have all that mobility back. So that was another testimony from it. but. Um, yeah, just saying all that to say that this made my salvation all the more real to me and it made God all the more real to me seeing like the kingdom of darkness and it made it, it made me so much more grateful to be saved and to have that salvation and to realize like 
this is really real. Like it's different. I've, I've heard about demons manifesting. I've seen videos before. I, I know about it, but to actually see it and to actually have it happen to you is like, it just put me on a, it, a whole nother level of thankfulness that God saved me and the desire that he has to save other people and to help other people and to pull other people out. So yeah, that was just a testimony that I've been wanting to share. God has been so good to me ever since. He's been blessing my socks off like crazy. Um, it's just, it's good. So I wanted to share that um, and put it out in the world. And just to let people know God loves you and wants to help you no matter what state you're in. If you're absolutely just backwards and lost and don't think you could ever be saved or don't think you ever would be saved, God is bigger than anything you could ever imagine and he can help you overcome it all. So just come to him with open arms, be real with him about it. He'll point you to where you need to go. He'll lead you to where you need to be. Talk to someone. That is another thing that um, I really wish I would have realized. These issues and stuff that I had, I used to talk to people about it, but after a while, after I got comfortable in it, I wasn't talking anymore. And that's how the enemy got me as well, is silencing my mouth and getting me to hold in and not say anything and just stockpiling all this demonic stuff on me. Like you you need to talk to someone, tell someone, someone you trust, someone you know. If you have a leader that you know you can help that you know can help you, absolutely say something. I knew my leaders could help me, but because I was being too prideful and too well, uh, I'm just I'll take care of it when I'm ready to, to take care of it. I'll come out when I'm ready to come out. I was suffering for an extra super long time for no reason. So say something to someone. Even talk to God if you have to talk to God first about it. Talk to God, talk to someone and get your freedom today. Thank you for listening. Uh, I can't wait to tell you what's next. It's going to be lit. Thank you. 
just continued to bless me um a few days after i had gotten my hair done and i had gotten some crochet hair um and it looked horrible it looked absolutely awful <laughs> the hair looked good on amazon but when it came in and it was put in my head it just looked bad and i was like god i can't like i can't look like this for the next month i need your help because i had that was all the money once i got my hair done that was all the money that was in the budget to get my hair done so i had no I didn't have any extra money after that to get it redone. Um, so I was like, God help me out. Um, and I had this thought of like, let me go look in my mailbox. Like, let me just go look. Went to the mailbox and there was a check in there for almost $300. So not only could I get my hair done, I could get some gas, some eyebrows, a little mustache work done. Like God came through. After that, um, I was able to move out of my apartment uh, I had a lot of favor on the highway with one of the police officers. I was going 80 in a 65. He let us go off scot-free. Um, I came home uh, looking for jobs. I got hired as a violin teacher and a private voice teacher. Um, and God has just been going through rolling ever since. Tomorrow, I will be a month free from pornography. I haven't um, had the desire to look at it. Uh, or do it ever since then so god is amazing what he does is real his effects are real like he still continues to bless me even after everything so he's amazing